It wasn't long ago that biofuels were heralded as the alternative fuel of the future. Renewable, sustainable, said to release less carbon than gasoline, biofuels seem to check all the green boxes. An apparent ideal solution to the pressing global problems of energy supply and climate change. The idea behind biofuels is that if you're burning biofuels in your car, you're going to be burning less carbon per mile than you are if you're burning petrol. But what seemed to be a panacea turned into a problem. Biofuel production is now being blamed for raising food prices, increasing poverty, and even adding to global warming. In the end, you have to be able to answer the question, are the biofuels we're putting into our petrol tank better for the climate or worse compared with the petrol and the diesel they're replacing. And it isn't quite as straightforward as people thought, the environmental movement thought five or six years ago. Most countries have jumped on the biofuel bandwagon. Europe grows mostly rapeseed, wheat and sugar beets. Brazil produces sugar cane and Southeast Asia grows palm trees to make high grade oil. In the US, corn and soya beans are turned into ethanol. Someday you're going to be using this in your cars. President Bush signed an energy bill that calls for refiners to replace 36 billion gallons of gasoline with ethanol by 2020, up from about 7 billion gallons today. Europe set the same deadline to replace 10% of its transport fuel. G8 countries are paying out millions of dollars in subsidies to farmers to grow biofuels. Subsidies which encourage farmers to grow crops for fuel instead of food. A confidential World Bank report leaked to a British newspaper estimates that the growth in biofuel crops has been responsible for 75 percent of the rise in food prices in the past six years. Well, nobody anticipated the effect that biofuel production has had on food prices. Now the UK government, backed by a British study, has put the brakes on biofuel production. They are in fact reducing the greenhouse gas emissions that uh, occur and they are also increasing food prices and we believe until these effects are better understood we should slow down on our growth in biofuels. The environmental benefits of biofuels are also coming under attack. Unlike fossil fuels, biofuels have the potential to be carbon neutral because they absorb carbon dioxide when they grow, offsetting the carbons they release when burned. But growing them takes energy, fertilizers and pesticides often made from conventional oil and the machines used in seeding, harvesting and processing use gasoline and electricity. By the time you actually factor in all those things, you're sometimes using in fact more carbon to power your car on biofuels than you were on um, if you were just burning, burning petrol in the tanks. It's not all bad. The best performing biofuels, such as ethanol from sugarcane, can deliver ten times more energy than required to produce them and release a quarter of the carbon emissions compared to gasoline. But a study published last February in Science Magazine claims the worst performing biofuels, such as ethanol made from corn, actually increase greenhouse gas emissions. What we found is that uh, using corn for ethanol roughly doubles the amount of global warming pollution that you get from driving your car rather than using gasoline. In the developing world, rainforests are falling victim to the lure of lucrative biofuels. Indonesia's forests, for example, they absorb a massive amount of carbon, but environmentalists say the rampant cutting and burning of trees to feed Indonesia's palm oil industry have made it into the world's third largest emitter of greenhouse gases. 20% of annual CO2 emissions worldwide are made from deforestation if you clear all these forests and cut them down, you will contribute so many CO2 emissions to the atmosphere that climate change will be out of control. In the search for alternatives, what some think is a wonder plant has emerged called Jatropha. It's a resilient, oil-rich tropical plant that can be grown on wasteland and it's now being cultivated throughout Africa and Southeast Asia. But it's toxic and invasive. And though it can be grown on marginal land, that same land is what poor farmers rely on to grow their food. Why are you spoiling our crops? Go and plant Jatropha in the Queen of England's gardens. We're seeing examples of poor people being essentially thrown off their land, the land that they were used to grow, using to grow food, 
and we've seen you know big companies coming in and trying to invest in these second generation biofuels which is causing problems for for poor people who are you know competing with land they said the land they have taken was idle but we were growing groundnuts there and yams on the other side we heard they've taken 10 square miles the problem with biofuels has been you know it was promoted as this great savior everyone wanted biofuels now 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 and it's that speed of change that's had these consequences that nobody was able to plan for we've got to make sure that we have sustainable biofuels we also need to think about the impact that their production has on land use because if you're growing more fuel for transport then there may be less land available for growing food and in the end it's about striking the right balance and making sure that we deal with climate change in the process. Striking a balance, it's become the mantra of those on the forefront of the biofuels debate how to save the planet but not harm the world's most vulnerable who themselves contribute little to global warming. Donna Friesen, NBC News.